We've got another Marvel list. This time it's 1992 on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hi there, comic book community. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics, and we're going to be taking a look at Marvel Comics from 1992. And perhaps the most significant event that happened to Marvel Comics in 1992 was the publication of Spawn Number 1. I know that was not a Marvel comic, but what happened was Todd McFarlane, who is a big contributor for Marvel and drives, especially in terms of back issues, his covers drive the prices of just random back issues. He left Marvel to go and form Image, along with Jim Lee uh, um, and uh, Rob Liefeld, Eric Larson, and Jim Valentino. So Marvel had to have other talent step up, and in some cases they did, and we're going to take a look at that on the top 10 list. So not a lot of weird books on the top 10 list, but I think the order of the top books will surprise you. Let's dive in. So at number 10 is Hulk Future Imperfect number one, which is the first appearance of Maestro. Maestro is a future Hulk from an alternate reality, has the mind of Bruce Banner. He's an older Hulk um, and is not the nicest character. The art in this book is by George Perez. And the Mark Ruffalo is still the Hulk in the MCU and they're talking about a potentially a Planet Hulk movie or show. There's going to be more Hulk stuff coming from the MCU could we see a version of this character at some point? Um, that would drive up the prices of this book. Already, this book sells for an average of $238 in a CGC 9.8, um, with about a $50 for a raw copy. In January, two copies have sold in a 9.8 for $250 and $265. Before that, the last recorded sale I could find was back in May for $275. So I think some of this... Um, these rumors involving Hulk coming to another property in the MCU may have driven the price of this book up. Next on the list is a book that has been red hot lately, and that's Spider-Man 2099. Number one, we saw Miguel O'Hara in the trailer for the next Spider-Verse film, Fighting Miles Morales, and that just drove this book through the roof. The average uh, sales in a CGC 9.8 are uh, is $242 and probably have to spend about $35 to get a high-grade raw copy. It's been consistently in the $250 range for 9.8s since the middle of December when we saw that trailer. Um, and that's almost a month now, and it's pretty much held and been selling fairly consistently. There are a good number of copies out there. Um, there was a 9.9 .9 sale, a single one of $3,550. And there's also a Toy Biz variant, a comic that was included with a toy, which instead of this red foil cover has a white cover. That um, sold in December in a CGC 9.8 for $2,500. So about 10 times what this book goes for. Um, and... We're definitely going to see Miguel O'Hara in the Spider-Verse. Will we see a version of that character at any point in the MCU? That remains to be seen. So this was the year that Marvel was kicking off that 2099 uh, run of books. Most of them debuted end of 92 and the beginning of 93. Um, up next on the list is Ghost Rider 31. This is the first full appearance of the Midnight Suns. And it sells for an average of $298 in a CGC 9.8. You can probably get a raw copy for 6 bucks. I picked up a copy for a dollar recently. Um, the, there was a sale of $300 um, in January. Um, a high, the high sale in September was $425. And um, there was actually an auction that ended at $97 in a CGC 9.8 in December. So this is still a book not everybody knows about. You can find it. It's polybagged. Um, if you take it out of the polybag, make sure you press that polybag crease out if you're going to submit it. But um, that is a book that people are specu speculating on because it's possible that 
Um, some of those characters we know are coming to the MCU. MCU. We've got Doctor Strange. We know we're getting Blade. Um, there's every indication that we're getting Ghost Rider. So that book could spike in popularity if they do put them together as a Midnight Suns team. That is uncertain if that will happen. Up next on the list, this is a book that um, gained a lot of traction recently, and that's X-Men Adventures number one. Um, now, this was based on the animated series. Um, the comic only lasted 15 issues. This is um, the first appearance in comics of a character, Morph, who was really the X-Men character Changeling, but they couldn't use the Changeling name, I'm assuming. DC was still using that name, or still a trademark that name for Beast Boy. Um, that was the name that Beast Boy went by when they rebooted the New Teen Titans in 1980. Um, the comic only lasted uh, 15 issues. Average sales of $340 and a CGC 9.8. You could probably get a raw copy for about $20. The most recent 9.8 sales were in November with uh, most of the sales in the $300 range and an outlier on the high side of $400. Moving up to number six on the list, it's Akira number 32. Um, that is, uh, was under the Epic imprint. It was based on the Japanese manga. And um, these issues are fairly scarce, fairly hard to find. There were two sales last year. Um, a $375 sale of a CGC 9.8 in December and a $348 sale in May, averaging out to $362. You, could pro you might be able to get a raw copy for about 20 bucks As the issues uh, progressed, the... Um, number of copies distributed decreased. So that's something that does drive the price of this up. And this is really the only non-superhero, uh, Marvel superhero book on this list. We go to number five, and we have Amazing Spider-Man 365, the first appearance of a preview of Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, it has an average sale in a CGC 9.8 of $414. Raw books sell for about $15 to $20. The high sale of uh, ASM 365 was a $630 sale in April. Um, in January, sales have been between $300 and $450. It is a cardstock cover, and it's a thick book, so it's a little bit tough to get in high grade. It has that hologram um, in the middle of it that can, if not taken care of correctly, very easily get scratched. So it, you can't really press it too easily without melting the hologram. So um, it is a book that's, even though it's plentiful, is somewhat difficult to get in high grade. Number four on the list is Marvel Super Heroes number eight, the first appearance of Squirrel Girl. Um, that sells for an average of $514 in a CGC 9.8. You're probably going to have to pay about $130 for a raw book. Um, the high sale was $630 for a 9.8 back in April. Um, no, I'm sorry. The most recent sale and the highest sale was back in August of $536. Um, and there were $500 sales in June. There was some speculation that the character would come to the MCU. That hasn't been confirmed, hasn't come to fruition. It is a popular, Squirrel Girl is a popular character. Um, and since Marvel is delving a little bit more into the comedic side... Um, with some of the Disney Plus um, properties, She-Hulk is um, supposedly going to be a comedy. At some point, there certainly could be room for Squirrel Girl in the MCU. Number three on the list. And a little bit surprising that this only came in at number three. And that is Amazing Spider-Man 361, the first full appearance of Carnage. Now, if I had done this list... Three or four months ago, it might have been number one. Average sales in the last 90 days, according to CoverPrice.com, um, $527 in a CGC 9.8, $135 for a raw book. The high was a $1,600 sale back in May. That's when the trailer hit. Um, and in January, this book has picked up a little bit in the six to $700 range. Um, there was one sale, and I haven't been able to verify if it was something a little bit different. I don't think it was a newsstand or a, sign, a signature series, but there was one sale for $1,140. Um, I couldn't find that on eBay. Um, so this book took a dip after the movie came out. 
Uh, we don't know if we're going to see Carnage again at any point um, based on the movie. Uh, so there are a lot of copies of this out there. And as CGC gets um, over its backlog, there are going to be more copies hitting the market as people... Uh, I submitted two copies back in May when the trailer hit, when I actually acquired them. Um, I haven't gotten them back yet because, you know, it was only May. Um, so I'm sure I'm not the only one who did that. Move on to number two on the list. And this is kind of an interesting book. And it is this. It is Sensational She-Hulk number 40 with um, her being urged to jump rope naked. These She-Hulk good girl art covers do sell. Um, there is definitely a market for them. Um, average sales in a CGC 9.8, $626. Raw copies are over $150. The last two sales were $700 in uh, January and a $600 sale in December. Um, and there are several of these good girl art uh covers during the John Byrne run on Sensational She-Hulk. We are getting a She-Hulk Disney Plus series. I don't know which way they're going to go with that, if, if it's going to increase the, the popularity of these covers or not. And this one surprised me a little bit. Uh, number one on the list, Iron Man 282, the first appearance of War Machine. The average CGC sales, $671 for a 9.8, about $100 for a raw book, it's cooled off a little bit recently, but it still holds that. The most recent sale was $535 in December. Now, remember, there is going to be an Armor Wars Disney Plus series. Don Cheadle is the lead in that. So War Machine is returning. Um, and I think we could see a bump in this book at that uh, point in time. This, right now, at this moment, this is a book people have forgotten. Nobody's thinking about War Machine right now. They're, he's way far off in the future in terms of coming back to the MCU in any meaningful way. We did see him briefly um, in an Emmy-nominated turn for Don Cheadle in Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, so the, the, the book isn't over yet. So the characters coming back, um, you know, will this grow in value? I don't know, but it, the, the, according to cover price... The average, 90-day average sales in a CGC 9.8 are um, $671. That is the highest of any Marvel book from 1992. What about our honorable mentions? Um, Ghost Rider number 28, first cameo of the Midnight Suns, about $200 in a 9.8. Ghost Rider Blaze, Spirits of Vengeance number one, first appearance of Lilith, um, the last two sales are about $100. There was a high sale of $115 in September. Marvel Comics Presents, $117, $118, and $119. Um, $117 is the first meeting of Wolverine and Venom. That storyline continued. $18 has the um, extra bonus of being a preview of Doom 2099. Those are all north of $100, um, the $117 and about the $160 range. There are amazing Spider-Man keys, as they always are. Um or minor keys, 358, $145 in a 9.8. 359, the first cameo of Carnage, um, $166. 360, the second cameo of Carnage, uh, 177. 362, the second appearance of Carnage, $146. 363, the third appearance of Carnage, $111. Now, I think all of those have dipped a little bit as Carnage isn't as sought after as he was um, basically from May until the opening of the movie. I think that did hit its peak right as the movie opened. And then it went, then it took the dip. Also, Spider Man 366 is a book that is north of $100 in a CGC 9.8. There's another book um, in which there are two sales in the $125 range, both in 2020, and that's Spider Man Special Edition number one. Um, this was a book that has Spider Man and Daredevil against Venom, includes the trial of Venom, but. It wasn't sold through comic stores or newsstands. Um, the only way to get it was through a UNICEF mail-in charity drive. Um, and it does have a poster included with it. I imagine since you had to mail away for it, it's harder to get in high grade. Um, you know, 
basically we know that they weren't shipping the books to the people who ordered them in 1992 back in Gemini mailers. So uh, take your chances there. Web of Spider-Man number 90 is also one of those hologram covers. Um, and it, uh, I'm sorry, the Web of Spider-Man 90 is the one that has a poster in it. That's the anniversary of Spider-Man, the 30th anniversary. Um, Warlock and the Infinity Watch, number one. All the Warlock keys went hot when the casting was announced. For that character, average sales in a CGC 9.8 of $176. Yeah, that's pretty much near the peak of where this book's going to be. X-Books, X-Force number 11 is the second appearance of Domino and her first cover appearance. That is about $118 and a 9.8. X-Men, number four, was a book that was talked about all over the place, speculated forever, uh, during, especially during the um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. It's the first appearance of Omega Red, but the CGC 9.8 average is only about $172. Now, Omega Red has not yet come to the MCU, as true of any of the X-Men characters. Could that book... Um, Peek up again if we do see him at some point. I don't think Omega Red's going to be the first mutant we're going to see. Um, number five is the second appearance of Omega Red in his first full cover appearance. That is about $123 and a 9.8. And X-Men number 11 has this classic Jim Lee cover. That's about $168 in a CG9, CGC 9.8. A little bit of a sleeper book on this list is Tech World number one. It's based on um, novels that were written, written by William Shatner. Um, there were two 9.8 sales in 2021, $156 in January and $160 in September. And there is news there could be a reboot TV series of this property uh, Shatner is producing. Another book that has gotten hot, uh, especially after the trailer dropped, and that's Morbius, number one. Uh, about $154 in a CGC 9.8. It hit highs of about $220 in November, December. Um, and it's hovered in the $180 to $200 range, although there was an $85 sale in January. I think what we're seeing occasionally here, especially in auctions, are people getting deals. Um, as the number of, uh, on eBay especially, as people are looking for you know, other ways to buy and sell books, Instagram, Facebook, Marketplace, etc., are now, as opposed to in the midst of the pandemic, having opportunities to go to shows, go to LCSs, um, that the number of people engaged in buying through eBay may be decreasing. Holidays, people putting their money elsewhere, buying Christmas gifts, etc. Um, there are, you see some auctions, especially if they're at the wrong time, going for well below fair market value. Another um, sensational She-Hulk cover, number 39. Uh, she's in a bikini. It's going to sell. This is a book that I don't really know much about. Slapstick, number one. Never heard of it. But there were two sales in June in a 9.8. One of $175, one of $115. Go figure. Um, Iron Man 281 is a War Machine cameo. Um, that's the issue before his first full appearance, about $139 in a CGC 9.8. A couple of G.I. Joes, um, 126, 130 have gone north of $100. Another book, um, that sells for about $120, $120 in a CGC 9.8 is Ren and Stimpy, number one. Um, uh, 9.8 in January for $130. The high sale was $275 back in October 2020. I don't expect it to hit that anytime soon. It did come polybagged with um, the uh, Air Fowler Enclosed. There's a secret message. I don't know. Um, I just picked this up at a uh, flea market. And, uh, you know, for a buck. Figured it was worth it. Um, also on the, the one of our honorable mentions, Infinity War number one. Uh, not as popular as Infinity Gauntlet, didn't have George Perez art, um, was a secondary story that uh, just over $100 in a 9.8. Um, sales in the last couple of months have been in the 50 to 135 range. Again, there's a, a lot, lot of variability here. Wolverine number 50, uh, die cut cover, first appearance of Shiva, a little bit over $100. Alpha Flight number 106 is uh, the issue in which North Star comes out, about $100. Uh, Quasar number 30, which is a what-if story. Um, it features, I believe, a venomized Thor, um, about $100. Another book that's really popular, but 
that um, doesn't really go for great prices in a 9.8 is Punisher Warzone, number one. Um, Joe from 360 Comics and I were discussing this book amongst others today. It's uh, what we, we couldn't remember if it was a, an embossed or a die cut cover. It's die cut. Um, that only goes for about $79 in a CGC 9.8. Um, and then two books that are on the list with no CGC sales, but have high raw sales. And I think this is a really interesting sleeper book. It's Marvel Superheroes number 11. And it's the first chronological story of Rogue. It was a story that was originally supposed to be printed in Ms. Marvel number 25. But the series was canceled. So for, I don't know, 11 or 12 years, it kind of sat in a drawer somewhere in the Marvel offices. Meanwhile, Rogue's first appearance in Avengers Annual number 10, if you were reading Ms. Marvel, there's a jump. There's It doesn't make sense, like, you know, how we go from the end of her story, which just kind of ended abruptly, to Avengers Annual 10. This fills in the gaps. Um, that, no 9.8 sales, but raw, about $75. And then another one, uh, a continuation of the Good Girl art uh, theme, is Marvel Swimsuit Special number one. That can go for about $25 or $30 raw. So that's Marvel in 1992. Again, Exodus to Image. Um, there was Carnage. You know, everybody was talking about Carnage this year, but he's only number three on the list with his first appearance. Um, he is behind the Naked Jump Rope and uh, She-Hulk and War Machine, kind of surprisingly. So that's our list for 1992. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, remember, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, we're going to be doing, I'm putting together the books for the 1,000 subscriber giveaway. We're only about uh, 30 some odd subscribers away. Um, I'm going to do three levels of prizes. Um, and I'm trying to get all the books related to properties that are going to be coming out in either movies or TV shows fairly soon. Um, in order to enter that, you have to be subscribed to the channel and you have to leave a comment. I'm going to take from the beginning of 2022 until when we hit a thousand subscribers, all those videos and the day that we do the giveaway, the one that has the fewest comments will be the one that I'll randomly choose three winners from. Um, so again, I hope you enjoyed the list. Again, we come to you every Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 a.m. Eastern. These, um, Yearly lists are generally, I've been, I've been good about it. I've been keeping on schedule to keep them at Thursday at 10 a.m. And uh, we hope you enjoy them. Come back the next time. And if you are interested in 1992, here's my DC list from 1992. And here's a video I just did comparing uh, Shumagorath to Gargantos in anticipation of what may happen in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So until next time, Enjoy your comics.